Hello everyone, welcome to another section of Schneider Electric PLC training tutorials where you will learn Schneider Electric PLC programming. Let's see what we shall cover in this lesson. In this lesson, we will start with the timer operations. We will first of all understand what a PLC timer is and how the pulse timer instruction works and how to use the pulse timer instruction. So first, what is a timer? Timers are reserved areas in the memory of the CPU that is used to delay an input or output signal in a PLC application. A timer instruction is the only function that can access the timer memory. Timers generally have two values, the internal timer value and the preset timer value. Timer use variables of certain data types to store time in the PLC. All timers need to store at least two timer values called the preset or timer limit value and the internal or accumulated timer value. Since these two timer values are saved in a timer data type, they have their limits and many PLCs save these two values as time or long time. However, the maximum and minimum preset and accumulated value the timer block can support depends on the data type or data format of the timer variable. It can change from one brand of PLC to another or even between different series of the same brand. The best way is to check their programming guide for the exact details. There are principally three types of timers and they include a pause timer, TP, the on delay timer, T on and the off delay timer, T off. Now, what are some of the applications of PLC timers? They include the use to delay control action, the use to run and stop operation after some delays, the use to set time delay in a control process to generate alarms for errors. Now we will start with the first type of timer, that is the pause timer called a TP. This is a symbol for the pause timer. And like I said in, the, in an earlier tutorial, every function block has the enable and the error notification parameters which are used to enable the block or to check if the block was properly executed. Now back to TP. Pulse timers have different parameters as well and they include the input parameter which is used to start the timer and the preset time which is used to determine how long the timer will run as well as the elapsed time or the internal time which will progressively count the timer. And then we have the output to tell if we have reached the preset time or not. Now let's see what the text says about this timer. It says that if the input IN becomes 1, the output Q becomes 1 and the internal time ET starts. And when the internal time ET value reaches the preset value, the output Q becomes 0 irrespective of the input IN. And if the internal timer has not reached the value of the preset yet, the internal time is not affected by a clock on the input pin. And if the internal time has reached the value of the preset and IN, that is the input IN is zero, the internal time stops and is reset to zero and Q becomes zero as well. So what does this mean? It means that it means that a logic one on the input IN is going to start this timer. And when you start this timer, Q becomes one and the internal timing starts. The internal timing will start until it timed up to the preset which you are the one to define or to determine. And when the time the internal timer value reaches the preset value the output becomes zero. So when these two values becomes equivalent, then the output goes to zero. That's what this means. The output becomes zero, irrespective of the state of the input. That is to say, even if the state have changed to zero or one within that duration, the output will still go to zero. That is why it says here that if the timer has not reached the, in the preset value yet, the internal timer is not affected by any event on this input parameter. 
And lastly, it says that if the internal time has reached the value of the preset and the input IN is zero, the internal timer stops and resets to zero and cure becomes zero. So it, can, it checks the state of this input only after the preset time has become equal to the internal time or when the internal time has equate the preset time it now checks the state of the input and if it is one it will begin again but if it is zero then it will reset the operation now let's look at the next exercise it says i design a psc ladder logic program that will sequentially and continuously flash two leads for one second each with a start switch so we have two leads that will flash for one second using a start switch so you can pause this video and try the exercise and you can get to it later on okay so now let's look at the solution that we have so this is a hardware circuit we have our start switch to initialize the process and these are our two leads that will progressively flash on and off for a second and this is a ladder logic program which i have already designed and here we have our preset time one second one second and how does it function when the start is, is pressed so it is pressed and hold okay when it's pressed and hold then a signal will move here okay, sorry let me do it so a signal will now move okay will now be true this this one will be true up to the input and as such this timer starts it starts for one second and it will now count so for one second this led will be on and after one second it will go off and at that instant this timer is not running because why is it not running you realize that at that instant this bit when this timer comes on it is going to open this circuit and when it opens this circuit this timer will not be will not be running so this timer will be running and notice that we have wired now the normally close contact of this timer output in series with tp so as such it will be closed it will allow the flow of logic so this timer will be running for one second and after one second the timer will go low when it goes low at that instant then this logic becomes true remember that this is constantly held in position and when it goes low then this will now close when it closes this timer start as this timer start this goes off and when it goes off this timer is not running now led2 is is on and led2 led1 is off and after one second led2 will go off and when it goes off then a pulse will come here again and this timer will start so they will constantly be switching be turning on and off for one second so this timer block determine the off state of this timer while this timer block timer one block determines the off state of the led okay so this timer block okay timer two block determine the off state of led one and timer and timer one block determine the off state of led two so let's test this in our logic okay so i've already pre-created the project already you can see here if i go to my variables i'll have my different variables that i've created two leds i've given the memory addresses internal memory so if you're using a physical input you can just replace these addresses okay so i'll go back to the to the ladder logic so this is our ladder logic and these are the two legs this is our timer okay just like we have so i will first of all just build analyze the project we have no errors then i will build it up now i'll connect the project so you can see it's connecting then i will now transfer the project to the plc okay all right so we have a problem here I didn't set the preset time so i can just correct that in one mode then i'll type one second i'll validate it oops sorry oops and i'll just type one second again that is one s so for one second then i'll validate it i'll build the project again 
and it's just going to take us directly to the run mode. Okay, so it's now running. So if I start this switch, so I can start it here directly by setting it to one. So I've set it to one, so you can clearly see that our LED one and two are constantly going on for one second, one second, one second. Okay, just like that. All right, good. So you can choose to modify the time, maybe if you want two seconds, then I'll put two seconds there and two seconds here as well. Okay, I will build it again and run. Okay, so now it is now switching two seconds on, two seconds off. On, off, two seconds, on, off, two seconds. Okay, so you can use this to generate your pulse maybe you can be using it to flash an led if it's if it's an alarm situation or if it's an emergency situation you can use this logic in your application like that to build it you can extend it to other a complex flashing sequence if you so if you so choose okay all right so let's go back to our presentation Okay, so let's review what we have learned. Okay, we have now understood that if for a pulse timer, if the input becomes one, the output becomes one, and the internal timer starts. When the internal timer value reaches a preset value, the output becomes zero irrespective of the state of the input. And if the internal timer has not reached the value of the preset yet, then the internal timer is not affected by a clock on the input and if the timer has reached the value of the preset and the input is zero then the timer will stop and reset to zero and q becomes zero as well okay okay so that brings us to the end of this section and the next session we are going to look at on the lead timer instructions okay so please if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the upcoming videos and if you find this video helpful please comment and if you think that there is also something to adjust in this video please also drop it in the comment section so thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video